Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Well, it's computer lab day. Today we are going to introduce the DNA sequence editor software. So here we are inside my computer and we're ready to take a look at some DNA sequence editor software. And to do that, I'm gonna fire up a web browser. Then I'll navigate over to benchling.com and I'll sign into my Benchling account that I've already created. Today we're going to use Benchling as our DNA sequence editor software. Now there's lots of good software out there that you can use for the same purpose. Benchling is browser based, which I like. Uh, and at least for now, it's free, which I super like. So I'll sign in here and it will take me to my completely empty, completely blank Benchling workspace. So before I get started, um, I just wanted to say that the goal of this video is not to teach everything about how to interact with the Benchling software. Uh, if you use Benchling, they provide lots of good tutorials and other tools for learning how to use the software. Um, so don't worry too much about like the exact sequence of clicks that I use to interact. Rather, I wanna focus on the plasmid itself and what we can learn about a plasmid inside the DNA sequence editor environment. Let's move into full screen mode here, and then I will create a new project for this tutorial called Plasmid Tutorial. And now we've got to import a Plasmid to look at, and Benchling has some nice built-in tools for importing Plasmid DNA sequence. So I'll go up here to Create, I'll say Import DNA, and I'm gonna search an external database. In this case, it's the BioBrick registry for a plasmid called PSB1C3. This is the standard BioBrick assembly plasmid. It's the plasmid everybody uses to submit new parts to the BioBrick registry. Uh, it's very short. It's only 2,070 base pairs long. Uh, it has all the key features that we expect to find on a plasmid and it's commonly used. So it's a, it's a great place to start uh, with our, our plasmid tutorial. And as I import it, we can see the workspace gets populated with everything that we might want to know about this plasmid. So the first thing that I see here in the middle is the sequence map. This is the raw DNA sequence itself, just in text format, T, A, C, T, and so on. Uh, it's 2,070 base pairs long, and it doesn't mean anything to me. It's just a, bunch of, uh, just a bunch of letters, but we will take care of that soon. Over here, I've got the plasmid map. So this reminds us that plasmid DNA is circular. The beginning and the end is connected. And when I highlight a particular sequence in the sequence map, I can see the corresponding region on the plasmid map gets highlighted. And as I go down and down and down the sequence, I go around and around the plasmid until eventually I, uh, I end up back at the beginning. So this reminds us that plasmid DNA is circular. Um, another cool feature of DNA sequence editor software is if we, if we choose, we can visualize the DNA as being double stranded. So right now I have just a single strand of DNA, T-A-C-T -T and so on. But uh, we know that, D, that plasma DNA is in fact double stranded. And so if I want to, I can go into the options menu here and I can turn on complement and I can see the double stranded plasmid DNA with the complementary DNA strand. So for every T on the top, there's an A on the bottom and so on. So this is my double-stranded circular plasmid. So it shows how using software, we can start to get, get familiar 
with the with the sort of you know the real biology of the plasmid we can see the double stranded circular plasmid dna now the next question that we might have here is how i mean what is this what is all this junk right how can we how can we understand it this is this is just a bunch of letters so i'm going to i'm going to turn off the complement here to 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 simplify the view but to help us understand what we're looking at we can turn on annotations so annotations are probably the most powerful feature of sequence editor software and as i turn them on you can see all of these colorful arrows come in to the sequence map indicating regions of interest and functional importance so these all of these regions that are marked are were created manually by whoever had the dna sequence before us and so they represent regions of the of dna that somebody thought are functionally important okay so they're these are good clues to places that we should direct our attention uh and if you like i can go over here to the plasmid map turn on annotations and i can see the corresponding annotations uh indicated in the circular plasmid map okay so some of these annotations are key functional features of a plasmid that we should be familiar with. So for example, chloramphenicol resistance, this is the antibiotic resistance marker. And in this case, the antibiotic is chloramphenicol. So if we add chloramphenicol to a culture of cells, we can kill all of the bacteria that don't have our plasmid. And in that way, we can work with just a pure culture of bacteria that do carry our plasmid. Okay, so this is extremely helpful in the lab. Uh, in helping us to, to transform cells and to stably maintain a culture of cells that are carrying the plasmid that we want. If I go up a little bit here, I can see another important feature, and this is the replication origin. Okay, so in this case, rep is short for replication origin, and PMB1 is the particular class of replication origin that we have. Uh, this functional feature, you may remember, is responsible for directing the DNA replication machinery of the host to the plasmid so that the plasmid can be copied uh, and therefore passed down through generations of cells as they, as they divide. Okay? So every, every plasmid that we work with needs to have a replication origin so that it can divide and be carried by a line of cells. And in this case, the the PMB1, this particular class of replication origin, controls the copy number uh, of the plasmid. So how frequently it's replicated and therefore how many copies of the cell are present inside of a, of a particular bacterium. Okay, so there's a lot of other functional features uh, on here that are marked. E. coli, his operon, terminator, stem loop, biobrick suffix. This thing is verification, reverse, VR, primer binding site, and so on. So I'm not going to go into all of these features today. But the fact that they're annotated on the plasmid means that somebody thought that they're important. Okay, so uh, we as synthetic biologists uh, might feel curious about uh, learning what a T0 terminator is um, and uh, maybe doing a Google search to, to find out more information about the T0 terminator. So I won't go into all of these little, all these little features that are, that are marked, but in general, they're all, they're all interesting in their own way. Uh, but there is one functional feature that we've talked about that isn't marked in this plasmid, and that's the multiple cloning site. So if you'll remember, this is the region of the plasmid that can, contains uh, recognition sequences for restriction enzymes, and it's the place where we can cut open the plasmid to paste in new synthetic DNA. And that's not marked here. But what I can do is go up to my options menu and turn on cut sites. And when I do that, I see up here in the sequence, recognition sequences for SP1, NOT1, PST1, and scrolling down to the bottom, ECOR1, NOT1, and XBA1 restriction sites. And I can go over here to the plasmid map and turn on cut sites and zoom in a little bit. And I can similarly see those restriction sites marked here. So I've got ECOR1, NOT1, SP1's over here, NOT1 over here, XBA1 here. And you can see they're all clustered to this particular region of the plasmid. 
which indicates that this is what we call the multiple cloning site. And now in this case, all of the, all of the enzymes that I have marked here are biobrick restriction enzymes, and that indicates that this plasmid is particularly useful for doing biobrick cloning. And that's it. DNA sequence editor software. Uh, it can show us annotations. It can show us circular DNA. It can show us double-stranded DNA. And in general, it's just, it's a way of getting sort of up close and personal with DNA. It's something that we can, you know, we can touch, we can move things around, we can zoom in, we can zoom out, we can copy and paste and all of the, all of the things that we can do uh, with software. They really let us get uh, a better intuition for, for, for what DNA looks like um, and how it's structured. And um, software like Benchling, super easy to use. So until next time, Take it easy.